So maybe it's a star teacher that is fired with no feedback and the staff speculates that maybe it's because they were vocal on policy that would have hurt administration, but there's no feedback. And so it just has this insidious um, effect where the staff feels that they should just fly under the radar, don't make waves, don't give any feedback, and as long as they fly under the radar, then their jobs are safe. And then there's this general feeling of apathy, not really feeling like they could take risks, and really just kind of uh, emotional stepping back from their jobs. Or maybe sexual abuse allegations are filed against top officials in a company and other leadership wonders why nobody talks to them about their concerns. And yet employees might report that um, their leadership often makes mistakes, but when they do make mistakes, they don't really take accountability or ownership of that. There's also this feeling where leaders are really volatile, but then when they kind of calm down, they'll say, oh, sorry about the miscommunication, rather than really taking any kind of accountability or ownership. There's also this feeling of expectation of perfection, and a really big problem is that they'll say that the meeting is gonna start at 12 and end at one, but it starts at 12.15 and ends at 1.45. So leadership is constantly wanting their employees to trust them, to assume positive intent, to be innovative, to collaborate. But what is often missing is that they minimize their own mistakes and they'll try to limit their employees' ability to launch. And there's this feeling that, that employees really can't trust them or feel safe. And something that's missing from those systems is a system for giving good, you know, helpful feedback where when there's areas of growth, you know, employees feel like they are cared about, that what their contribution is matters, so that then they can feel like they can receive that feedback. And especially if it's not done in this shaming, blaming, judgmental um, way. So when people feel like they can't make mistakes and that they have to be perfect, there's very little um, risk taking, there's very little innovation. And so we want to create systems where people feel like they can make mistakes and that they can learn from those mistakes and have their um, leadership appreciate how they're learning from that. Um, so another major thing is accountability. So when leadership screws up, they need to not just apologize because there's a very good a phrase that's like believe patterns not apologies so apology is good um, but really making a commitment and a plan to do something different in the future to talk about what you learned or what was going on and to build trust in that way so even if you apologize there's other steps for accountability that are you need to take um, and then healthy boundaries are another thing that I find is often missing in good or is missing in, in systems where um, employees aren't happy or there's lots of attrition. And, you know, again, starting a meeting on time and ending on time is one simple way for you to have boundaries that really creates trust and it creates um, safety in the system and it lets employees know that their time is valuable. And this isn't true just for business. So this is true for any kind of leadership role. So real leaders lift people up. If you're in a mentorship role, you kind of got to be prepared that someday your mentee might be your competition, right? That your men a mentorship is really raising somebody up to launch. And if you're mentoring them, they're likely going to be in a similar role job situation. So real leaders mentor people, lift people up, and they prepare them to launch and move on. And really wanting to 
the whole team to be able to lift up and watch. You know, respect is not obedience and authority is not accountability. So whether you're a boss or a mentor or a church leader or a parent, we want to raise people to fly. So have a great day. Bye.